Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or a professional level. So won't you stay tuned? Welcome. I would like to welcome to our program a distinguished minister and world-renowned spiritual leader, Dr. Stuart Grayson. We're going to learn how to enhance our personal power and spiritual direction. And I would like to welcome you. Doctor, thank you so much for joining me. It's a today. pleasure to be here. In your book, Spiritual Healing, you list seven <coughs> essential essentials in the practice of spiritual mind healing. Now that I've got it all confused here, would you please explain it to us? Well, I um, can't go over the seven essentials uh, as um, a sequence one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But let me say this, that it is important for us to recognize that we live in a universe of energy. What do you mean by that? Energy is everywhere. It's out there, it's here. Our bodies function as energy in action. There is solar energy. There is energy within everything uh, that we are related to and that we experience. This energy is power. We live in a universe of power. And part of the current reaching out to Mars is trying to fathom uh, this great energy potential and action that is everywhere in the universe, in the cosmos. So one of the basic and essential actions in getting personal empowerment mm -hmm. for becoming more autonomous, more able to direct your life, to attain, to achieve, to accomplish good in your experience, is by recognizing that there is a power principle in the universe, that we are in it, we are of it, we express it, we manifest it in every way, in our minds, emotions, bodies, and in our affairs. So we're all, would you say that we're all identical? We are all identical in our relationship to the universe. We are individual and very personal in the way we use it, in the way we experience it, in the way we express it. But we are identical as manifestations or expressions of this one power, which is a continual presence in the universe and in us and moving through us. So the essential, really boarding down those, those seven uh, basic elements uh, to uh, an essence, it is a matter of recognizing that there is power, that it is universal, that it is a principle of being, that it is therefore our being because we are in and of the universe, we express it, and that if we are conscious of this, we can begin to direct it in our lives for the greater fulfillment of our ex experiences, no matter what they may be, mental, emotional, physical, relational, uh, interpersonal, being relational, of course, but uh, in our careers, in our, our work, in every way. Okay, so if we're doing this, how do we pull it all together so it can help us? The first thing we have to do is begin to understand that there is power. All right. That we are in it and of it. Now, you do that by going over the rationale behind it. There are many books that one can look into. Uh, I have several books of my own that would help people, the works of Dr. Ernest Holmes will help people. Even the famous uh, uh, positive thinking of uh, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale uh, many years ago, but his books are still uh, very popular. Uh, he, too, is expressing probably more through a uh, religious uh, venue than I would express it, 
but it's still there. And uh, it is showing an individual that you do not have to be a victim of what other people say, think, or do. Okay, so if somebody is saying something nasty to you or you feel intimidated or you, they're trying to put a, do a number on you in one way or another, what would be the first step somebody would take to say, hey, stop it. It's not affecting me. I guess it goes back to the old saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Yes, but, the, but they will hurt you if you internalize it. Okay, so so how the do first you thing you want to do is not internalize it. Right. The moment you begin to feel self-pity or anger mm -hmm. or resentment, right. in that moment you have to say, stop. Okay. That is not the truth of my nature of my being or of that other person's nature or being. It's the way they're thinking, the way they're relating to life, and the way they're expressing what they're thinking and the way they're relating to life. And I simply need to understand that if they knew better, they would do better. But since they don't know better, they can't do better, so they have to express this negative expression the way they do because of that lack. But I, you can say to yourself, I know better. I know that the thoughts I think use a creative law. Which is? It's a law of mind, okay. of consciousness. The way you think is the way your life begins to uh, play out in your experience. It's the way uh, you will find uh, relationships happening. It's the way you will find your career or your business unfolding. And since your work here is the woman's connection, right? How can a and woman a especially related to that, women uh, through the eons, it seems, until a very recent time, have been under the heel of society and Very of the true. male dominated society well it's still hap it's still happening uh, yes but to a much lesser degree so women began to take up the cudgels as it were <laughs> to realize that they're going to think differently because it all came from thought it all came from ideas it all came from concepts it all came from mind or mentation or consciousness some women began to say, no, they were saying that stop that I was telling you about. No, stop. I am not going to be a victim any longer. And the whole story about women's rights and the, 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 the vote and so on came from a few brilliant minds. Brilliant may be not necessarily academically. They may be. But brilliant in that they had a sense of self and that they were no longer going to be victims. So you see that from way back as the women's movement began to develop into more and more freedom and autonomy for the person, it came through a change of mind. So new thinking. So in essence, what you're saying is the way one thinks is the, one, is the way one is going to perceive themselves? The way one thinks is the way one is going to experience one's life. Okay. The way you use the word perceive, that's very good. The way you perceive yourself is the way you are going to experience yourself in your life, in your world in every aspect of your world, whether it's your career and your work or in your interpersonal relationships. All right, well, let's, m I, th I think I understand this, all right. all right? But for those who might not understand it, are there, I think you said there's four treatments, four steps in a treatment to move you along? Well, there is, you used the word treatment, and we've okay. never used that before. So what we're talking about Right. is a technique, uh -huh. a method, a technique right. in which you can bring about a change in your consciousness 
by recognizing and appreciating who and what you are in the universe. So the steps basically are that you begin to understand what the universe is, that it is infinite power, creative action, it is principle, it is law. The first thing you do is begin to realize that it is absolutely an impersonal universe, vast and powerful. The second thing is then that you express that. You are a manifestation of it. You are an expression of it. You begin to recognize what the universe is mm -hmm. and then unify yourself in your mind with that power and that presence, that principle of power. Now, you're not creating power. You're not creating anything. What you're doing in this uh, unification is simply recognizing your connection with this infinite power and presence. So first you recognize that there is that, then you unify with it, then you begin to affirm who and what you are in the very intimate details of your life experience at the moment because you are connected to a higher power. And you can say that in my business, in my work, in my relationship to my boss, boss to my employee, uh, to my coworker, I am the action of this power of givingness that's in the universe. And therefore, we can call it a power of love, because love is givingness. So I am then in and of that one power of love. It operates in me. And I recognize now that in my relationship to Barry, in my relationship to my boss, to my employee, to my spouse, to whoever it may be, that that perfect action of love is manifesting in me and through me toward them. Since they're in and of the same thing, I know that really no matter how they behave, no matter what they say or what they do in ignorance, that that same power, that same love is operating around and within them and is expressing toward me. In recognizing this and appreciating my relationship to the universe, I can then say, ah, that's the way it really is. No matter what the human, physical, material appearances are, the reality is, the essential, basic reality is, that the power and presence for good in the universe is around me, yes, but within me, around my friend, around Barry, but within her. And it is moving between us as now harmonious interaction. And I release in my thought, in my mind, in my feeling, I release these ideas to the universe, to the great principle of creativity. And I know that it is moving in me as my subconscious mind, as my conscious mind, as a law of mind in action to bring about fulfillment, harmony, ease, prosperity, the removal of all negations. So what you're saying. And that's the way you would work with it. That that's the we call it spiritual mind treatment technique. So what you're giving out. Excuse me. <laughs> and and <laughs> I've got to get this out. And anyone can learn it, and anyone can use it. Now I'll, now I'll keep quiet. <laughs> I, I'm just overwhelmed. I don't know what to say here. Uh, it's almost like a mirror a technique. If you're giving it out, is. then you are diffusing Let's say somebody doesn't like you. You're diffusing the hostility by sending them love. So no, you're not really sending them anything. You're sending them love. Well, yeah. uh, well, in a way, you could say that. But what you're doing is recognizing that the love principle in the universe is in you and emanating from you, but is in them also and emanating through them. But they don't recognize it. They don't understand it. They don't appreciate it. So because of that, because you know that, 
Right. You no longer have any hostility toward them. You don't react toward them with anger, with resentment. You just say, if they knew better, they would do better. If they knew better, they would do better. Yes, but since they don't know better, they can't do better. So you then say, I just release them to their greater good. I release them to their greater good. To their greater good. So if anybody's doing any harm to you, you just release them to their greater good. Absolutely, and, and you try, of course, to, to do anything you can on the human physical level right. to bring a correction to this, to bring a cure to the problem, to, to bring a resolution to the conflict. And it works. It works between individuals, mm -hmm. and it works in communities, in society, and it works among nations. But people are society. People are nations. People are the community. And we, the people, have to recognize who and what we are, all of us, and as part of the universe. And when you begin to do that, you see, all separation, all um, judgmentalism, um, all sense of uh, being, I'm better than this person or this individual uh, thinks he, she is better than I am, all of that begins to go. And among people in, in, in nations and in the world, when we begin to realize that we are all in and of the same principle, we're, we're all related, truly related. When we think in terms of family, it is not just our genetic family of the immediate uh, uh, relatives, but it's truly what has been called uh, the family of man, the family of humankind. We're all related. Sometimes that can be pretty frightening when you think of some of the people, but anyway. <laughs> well, uh, how wonderful when you think of what could happen we if everyone began to realize their spiritual resource, because that's what we're talking about, a spiritual resource that we all have. All right. Let me just move on a minute, because I want to get it. There's a lot to cover here, and we don't have a whole I lot of time. I know that. But one of the things you were talking about in your book on spiritual healing, you were talking about meditation. Yes. And I thought, while we're still contemplating what you just said and digesting everything, if you would explain meditation and how that would help us to get to this love part? Well, meditation is very simple. I mean, there are many people who teach meditation and there are various techniques. Mm -hmm. They have to do with concentration. Right. They have to do very often with the repetition of a word called a mantra. Uh, a mantra. Uh, they have to do with uh, various techniques that come from uh, generally uh, religious and spiritual backgrounds. But meditation is very simple. It is, sim it is being quiet, being still, and just ruminating over, thinking about certain positive, constructive ideas. Sitting quietly and just letting these ideas go over and over in your mind. You may ask me, uh, what ideas? What ideas uh, would a person have? I would say take any positive and constructive idea from my books, the books of many other people, uh, any phrase, any sentence, any idea. If you want to repeat it, repeat it to yourself. If you want to just think about it, then think about it. But that is essentially what meditation is. It's kind now, I've studied all kinds of meditation, and I can teach you yoga practice, and I can teach you other methods of meditation that are basic techniques to get one's mind centered, one-pointed. But it is 
so easy to take a phrase or a thought that you like, that you find pleasing, and Do you have any favorites? close your eyes and just ruminate over that. I have one that I like very much. Would you share it uh, with us? Although I can, yes, I will. Although I can find a, a myriad of, of uh, phrases and words that I like. But there's one that I like very much. And that is the idea that there is but one life, one life principle. That life is God or the spirit or the cosmic life or the universal life. That life is pure, perfect, whole, complete. That life is my life now. So I, I would just think Ooh. about that and repeat that over and over again. There's one life. That life is the great cosmic life, the great life of the spirit. That life is pure, perfect, whole, complete. That life is my life now. There is but one life. That life is the perfect life. And you see, if you repeat it over and over, you have to think about it as you do that. So it doesn't become rote. So it doesn't become dull. So you don't fall asleep. <laughs> doing this. Because you were talking about in your book, talking about repetition and everything, you were saying that you do treatments versus affirmations, and I wasn't right. sure where this all came into play. Well, this is like an affirmation, but I said be thoughtful about it. Right. Some people love affirmations, and I understand that, and they're great. Positive affirmations of life, constructive affirmations about life. They're great. The first time you hear it, the first time you say it, it's mind-boggling and mind-blowing and wonderful. The second time, it's good. makes me feel good. It's great. The third time, it's good. The fourth time, it's okay. The fifth time, well, and then from that point on, it can be mere repetition of a phrase or a word without any real meaning for you. And what you want is to get a kind of breakthrough in thought, in consciousness, to a higher and larger sense of life and of what you are. Cool. It's heady stuff, it's big stuff, but it's practical, it's wonderful, it's life transforming, it's life changing. It has not to do with any religion, although it takes certainly a, a part, or doesn't take part, but it can partake of any religious idea or point of view. Or if you're an agnostic or even an atheist, you can still think positive, creative thoughts. And the wonderful thing, Barry, is that our thoughts don't just float out there. They go in here. The thoughts we think and the feelings we have go into ourselves, into a deeper side or part of ourselves. What is that? What is it called? What do psychologists call it? Ego. Not ego, no, no. They, they call it the subconscious mind. Okay. It's the subconscious area of your mind. You have a conscious side, you have a subconscious side, and you have a vast unconscious from which you've come. And so every thought you think, every feeling you have, the spiritual technique or method you use, it's not just words. It goes into the depths of your consciousness. I've just been given a three-minute closing bell, so you could say, signal. How would you like to wrap all this up in three minutes? In three minutes, I would say that no one has to accept her or himself as a victim. Okay that there is a higher power 
call it anything you will, but it's the principle of energy in the universe. It is creative intelligence, if you will, out of which all that we know has come. Creative intelligence, because just by looking at human beings, what human beings have done, we exhibit intelligence. Sometimes we use it stupidly, but it's intelligence. So recognizing the cosmic principle, recognizing who and what we are, unifying ourselves with this principle in mind, in thought, and then affirming it as happening in a particular human experience now. That will bring about inner and outer change in a person's life. But I don't want anyone to accept this because I say it. I want people to experiment with these ideas and through experimentation to see whether or not they work. How long does it usually take, real quickly, how long does it usually take for something to manifest itself? Well, that all depends upon one's realization of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Recognition, yes, that we can get quickly. But a realization of it means a whole-souled feeling that this is the truth. Now, once you get to that, the great creative law of mind in you will bring it about. It will operate as a law of attraction. It will operate as a law of re repelling of negatives, repulsion. It will operate as a law of creative good in your life. And time is not part of it. And unfortunately, I've been given the closing <laughs> bell. <laughs> the closing time. <laughs> the closing time. Dr. Grayson, I want to thank you so much for joining You're welcome. me. I mean, you have given me a lot of thinking to do and uh, a lot of exercises to start out with. And I thank you very much. You're and very welcome. Uh, get me on the started on the spiritual path. And I thank you for joining us. And I'm sure you're going to be on the spiritual path too. Bye now. That was really unbelievable. There's so much more I want to talk about. <laughs>